Good morning, Lampo. Good morning, Lampo. Gosh, have we missed you all. We uh, <laughs> took Wednesday off, as I'm sure a few of you were aware, um, to catch our breath. Michelle, yeah. welcome back. Thank we, you. Uh, we took a couple days off, but we didn't take the days off. Yeah. We actually did a lot of cooking and idea creation. Yes, and, so it was a lot of fun the last few days. So. And this uh, last night, you didn't really get any sleep. Yeah, I should mention, um, in case you think that I look like death and white and pale face, I am. Uh, I think I, I, I took a chance on some cheese in the drawer last night. She's risky sometimes. I, yeah, and <laughs> I was up all last night with uh, some food poisoning, so... I'm not feeling so she hot She is today. a trooper. <laughs> Honestly, like an hour ago, she was kind of crying on the couch. And uh, I was thinking, oh, man, yeah. um, uh, is this going to be a solo show today? But uh, she made it out and her yeah. smile is just as radiant as ever, even oh, through the stop. And I just the used the temperature saturation to warm my face up a little bit. It you works. Know, so. it works. <laughs> How are you guys doing this yes. morning? We hope you guys are doing well. Uh, we're excited. We had some really fun um, news happen to us yesterday. Yeah. We got a little article I would say little. It was in the uh, Santa Maria Sun by Zach Ezone, if I've mispronounced that. But uh, we're, we're good at mispronouncing names. So. <laughs> uh, fun little write up on our little morning show, um, giving Lompoc a little bit of love. And yeah. uh, that was kind of exciting. Yeah, we were very excited. So yeah. thank you so much for watching. And uh, that's how it got on his radar. So yeah. So that was exciting. that was really cool. Yeah. Uh, what else do we have? Um, so we, uh, in terms of news in the area, obviously, we're all supposed to be wearing masks. And I've seen people get a lot better at that at the grocery store. Um, I think I was out at, um, over the weekend I was out and this was right after it had come out last Friday. And I want to say maybe a third of people were wearing masks. And when I went to the store on, and I don't go to the store all the time. It's, it's just like, I do these recipes then I need like one thing and I'm like, okay, but I'm going to try my best. To all these essential it. trips, Michelle. And I am wearing a mask. Um, <laughs> but I was at Vons the other day and I want to say like two thirds of people were wearing a mask. Um, so good job, people. Um, and there is an awesome group in Lompoc that we've mentioned before. Yes. Um, it's called Just Breathe Lompoc. They have a Facebook group and we do have a message from Denny Overton. Lompoc um, rocks. <laughs> we're not at that part. Yet, no, I know, but I'm just saying our community steps yes. up when they, uh, when something happens. So yes. this is pretty cool. So here's Denny. Thank you, Denny. Hi, Jeremy and Michelle. First of all, I want to thank you for the show you're doing. It's really enjoyable and kind of makes me feel like I have a little bit of community uh, connection. So thank you. Um, I wanted to do an update on the group Just Breathe Lompoc that's making masks for people. We just have a small group that's making masks, but we have made uh, over 500 now. And um, they've gone to places like the Bridge House, uh, Viva, Senior Centers, church groups, um, dispensaries, the Route 1 Farmer's Market, Grocery Outlet, a Cottage Hospital, and a lot to local people here, of course. Um, when we have enough, we are trying to put some masks in a box there by the garden shop on South H. So if you're looking for a mask, you might check there after 5 o'clock each day. Um, we really do need more mask makers. Um, we could really use more help because I, I hear people still looking for masks. And we can only make them as fast as we can make them. Um, the other thing you could do to help if you want is to purchase elastic for the mask makers because um, it's hard to find and uh, it's it's what we all need to make the masks. We need about 14 inches for each mask. Um, so if you'd like to help, um, Creation Station in Buellton does have elastic and you can just call them to order it. And I think that's about it. Um, Thanks again for your show, and um, just check out the Facebook group Just Breathe Lompoc if you want more information. Thanks. That was awesome. Thank Great you, Great group of folks. Denny, keep us posted. Uh, we'd love to know how progress is going, and as supplies dwindle, hopefully we can step up and uh, if we can uh, yeah. once in a while grab something off of Amazon or... Well, um, no, Creation Station. Creation Hilton. Station. They have but elastic, if, so that's how you can help if you can't sew. Um, you can get some elastic from them. Yes. Or, I mean, I guess you can order it on Amazon and get also it like in a you, month or something. Because that's You can also cool. ask your mother. But, well, I don't know about yours. My mom has many drawers full of materials oh. and elastics and things. So I might um, hit her up to see if, yeah. hey, 
some things you're not using, uh, maybe we can use them uh, yeah. for the just breathe. But That's if you fun. have sewing skills, you can help out. So join the Facebook group. And um, yeah, I was at Grocery Outlet and they there was a girl wearing a Mickey Mouse uh, mask there. And I was like, Where did, where'd you get that mask? Did you make it yourself? And she's like, no, there were some nice people that um, did these for us, which I thought was so cool. So thank you. Thank you very much for people with skills. Go Lompoc. <laughs> Go Lompoc. All right. Um, so next, I wanted to mention um, upcoming shows. Jeremy, you had some updates on that. Yeah, very exciting news. We're finally kind of um, hitting our stride, I think, and getting some fun interviews lined up. Uh, we're going to be speaking later today with the CEO of the Lompoc Hospital, um, asking him some questions, just checking in to see how everything's uh, going uh, down at the local hospital. So that should be really interesting. We'll be playing that on Monday. Um, we've got several other interviews lined up with some really great folks. Um, folks are stepping up and starting to support and pitch in with some content. So thank you guys very much for all of that. Um, um, one else? other piece of content, um, those with seniors, um, not seniors as in over 65, but seniors as in kids. Young seniors. Uh, young seniors. Um, if you have a senior that's graduating, um, we don't want them to be forgotten or feel like they're not getting to celebrate so shout out um, to melissa coombs for this idea had a really good idea um if you know uh, parents or um, other high school seniors um out there consider um turning them onto the show and we'd love to have them submit so we can well, show that, off yeah let's be specific here yeah. um we'd love for you to send us a photo of your senior along with a note with their name their high school so we don't have to go sleuthing online um and then maybe just a little note about a uh, couple sentences um celebrating them what they did what they're doing so we'd love to give them shout outs on our show uh we cannot imagine how many kids around the country if not the world um we're all looking forward to graduation day 2020 yeah. what a great date um lots of dreams and hopes have been dashed Ugh. as a result of uh covid19 so not been a fun um, year. we our hearts go out to all the kids and uh, hopefully we can uh, bring a little sunshine back to uh, their experience yeah so, so it is Easter this weekend, yes. um, and I'm sure you're going to be decorating and making lots of things. Um, we had one of our associate producers, Taylor Savella, create a little video for us. Um, well, film it, and we kind of put it together. Um, Taylor's a rock star. Taylor's showing you rock how star. to dye your own eggs with natural dyes. So I wanted to show that. It was so cool. Good job, Taylor. Yee Good morning, Lampo. Today I am making naturally dyed Easter eggs with turmeric powder, yellow onion skins, beets, um, purple cabbage, and vinegar. <laughs> Pretty little eggs. That's pretty awesome, Taylor and Caitlin. Good job on the camera work. Yes. Uh, um, if you enjoyed that video, shout out to Caitlin for shooting it horizontally versus yep. this way. If you want to see some of your stuff on our show, potentially, which we would love to share, just remember to shoot it horizontally. Uh, this this way. Something you know what I yeah, mean. Yeah, but you're so off topic. I am um, very distracted. I do Sorry. want to mention, um, because we were putting it together late last night, so we didn't get to see all the final eggs, but Caitlin did say a note that um, it is better to seep them longer. So the natural dyes, they do take longer to stick. She said the turmeric one came out really, really good. And the idea with the flower in there was to kind of leave a space where the color didn't ne necessarily touch, but I think there's um, a way to kind of get in there so it stays put and you can... Um, get kind of a white mark where the flower is and then the rest of it is um, colorful so flower eggs <laughs> so we we had an opportunity to uh, work some magic with eggs as well yes we uh, did. not specifically in celebration of easter but just no it was in celebration of easter to, we were trying to think of ideas to do and, and we were looking at like we were looking at making some marshmallows like making our own peeps um, but then we would just eat them all and we're not really moving that much anyways <sighs> and so um, we're Almost. thinking about maybe painting some eggs, um, dyeing our own, but we don't have kids. And it's like, with, 
I don't, yeah. So we had another idea that we thought would be much more entertaining for all of you. Well, at least for you. Yes. So can I just play it? Or do you want to give more of an um, introduction? Uh, we would have uh, used more eggs, but eggs are scarce. Yeah. Even though it didn't seem like that at the grocery store this last week. But yes. Anyway, uh, enjoy. And don't yell at us for using eggs. All right, since it's Easter, we thought we'd have a little fun with eggs. We're going to play a little game of egg roulette. Um, I only have six eggs here because, I mean, it's kind of hard to find eggs right now, um, but I'm willing to sacrifice. So five of the six are hard-boiled and one is not, and Jeremy and I are going to take turns smashing them on our heads. One, two, three. Ouch, that's hard. That was hard boiled. Ow. One, two. <laughs> one, two. Oh, also hard boiled. Ouch. And one, two. We've only got two eggs left. One, two. <laughs> been nice knowing you all. I don't want to egg you on, but this is the end of the road for this egg. Okay, ready? Ready. One, two. <laughs> that was fun uh it wasn't an editing trick it, 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 we couldn't do it again if we tried but the uh, uh very last egg was the uh i seriously it was oh the my juicy gosh. one i really thought it was gonna be me on that second to last one and i was ready for it <laughs> anyway uh, i hope you guys had a little fun uh, it is monday hey, really? uh, no it's Let's, friday i, I don't even know what it did it hurt when you smack the eggs on your head? I just said it was Monday. I have no idea what day okay, it is. Okay, we're talking, you, let's get... Go ahead. What were you focus, saying? Focus, focus. Um, did it hurt when you hit yourself with the eggs on the head? N no. Because it hurt me. Yeah. Like, the, I, don't, I don't know. Maybe, I have a harder head, I think, than you do. I'm wondering how that even works. Because it's, I mean, every time I hit it, it was like, ow. And then I had to keep finding different places on my head. I almost feel like there's like soft spots on my scalp that maybe like didn't fully form from being a baby, but we did not get enough sleep last night. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, um, so um, yeah. that was the egg roulette. So now to something a little bit more serious and seriously. Yes. Um, we Let's take a deep breath. Yeah. So April is um, Child Abuse Awareness Month. And we um, know that Shelter in Place has um, affected this affected the outreach that people are um, usually doing at this time at schools. And we wanted to speak with Ann McCarty. Um, Ann ha is celebrating 25 years at the North County Rape Crisis Center here in Santa Barbara County. And they, their territory is everything north of Gaviota Tunnel. Mm -hmm. So that means all of Lompoc, all of Santa Maria, um, Los Alamos, San Diego's Valley, um, those unincorporated areas. Um, and the work that they're doing is really, really important. So we wanted to bring attention to it. Mm -hmm. um, she uh, And for those of uh, you locals um, that know Ann McCarty, she's just a local treasure and a hero. Yeah. Honestly, um, she was the recipient of the Woman of the Year, I think a year or two ago, a couple years ago here in Lompoc. 2018. 2018. Uh, she just steps up and she's one of the kindest, nicest, most huggable people you will meet. Yeah. Um, I can't wait until hopefully we get to hug people again. But yes. she is oh my really gosh, awesome. I miss hugging. This is uh, this is a serious topic and we're always trying to bring something uplifting and positive. Um, please consider that this is uplifting and positive because as we educate ourselves and others on how to become better humans, uh, maybe it lifts us all up. So yeah. anyway, thank you, Anne, for yes. taking your time with thank us. Thank you, Anne. How has uh, shelter in place impacted the number of calls that you've been getting? 
So that's a really interesting question because someone reached out to me last night and said, hey, the governor is saying that calls are, are going down, calls to crisis lines are going down. And that might be true. And for us, it is true. But it doesn't mean that abuse has stopped. Because in reality, what we know and what scares us the most is that abuse has actually gone up. But when you think about our children, this is what gets me the most. When you think about our children that are normally in school, and all of those teachers that lay eyes on these children every single day, all of those individuals are mandated reporters. So that's how those children sometimes get help. Or even us, we would normally be in the school presenting Child Safe today, right now. And we get disclosures from children every week, just about, that we're in schools. We're not there providing that information. So who are they telling? They're stuck at home. These children, these babies are stuck at home with the very people that they want to talk about, but they haven't. Who do they tell? There's obviously no solution, you know, to this. So what are some of the tips maybe that friends can do or maybe teachers who are still communicating via Zoom? How, what, what kind of advice might you have for them? I think teachers still have the ability to report if they suspect something. Mm -hmm. So if, if a teacher has a face-to-face -face Zoom with a, a particular student, a student, and something just doesn't feel right, I would say trust your gut, make a report, let Child Welfare Services or law enforcement investigate because that's what they do. Mm -hmm. Teachers don't have to take on that role and do, do an investigation. But the other thing is, um, we all need to be active bystanders. Mm -hmm. If you see something, say something. Mm -hmm. If something isn't right, if something, we talk to the kids all the time about the uh-oh feeling. If it just gives you the squigglies in your belly, make a call. Yeah. There's no harm, no foul in that. We've had cases where we've heard neighbors say, I heard screaming, but I didn't call because I didn't want to be involved. Right. We have to be involved. Right. Who's going to be the voice for that child if you aren't, you know? Talk about the relationship maybe with the Lompoc Police Department and how that's been a long-term relationship. For Lompoc, and this isn't in every single jurisdiction in the state of California, but we're fortunate here that we have a victim advocate embedded within the police department. If there's a case that comes in, they immediately reach out to Sabrina, and Sabrina provides that direct support for that victim, no matter what the crime is that they're getting her involved in. I think that we're, very, not I think, I know that we're very fortunate and our city should be very proud of the fact that we have an advocate embedded in the police department mm -hmm. that's there, that's available 24 seven. Mm -hmm. Because what that does is it means they can concentrate they being the police department or the police officers can concentrate on the investigation. They don't have to do the hand holding or the soothing. And we know that statistically, a survivor of any form of violence is more apt to cooperate with the investigative process if they have some form of support. So how does somebody discreetly reach out to you? Is there, can you just call or can you text or, yeah. So we have, we operate a 24 hour hotline and it's 24 hours a day and it's completely confidential. So someone can call us and just talk. Mm -hmm. Someone can call us and ask for information on how to report. Let's say an assault happened last night and somebody called me for information. I lay out all the options, but it's their choice. Reporting is not for everybody. Mm -hmm. Taking care of mental health or your mental health is important. And that's one of the things that we really stress too, because we know that the, the journey of healing from sexual violence or child abuse is not necessarily something that you can do on your own. Well, and for kids specifically, how do, how do you relate it with, with kids, I guess? So for the, the kids that are watching, um, I want you to think about the ladies that have come into your classroom, Miss Margaret and Miss Sue, and they bring the puppets. And they, and they talk about the uh-oh feeling. So the parents that are now listening, ask your children about that. 
continue to have conversations. That's one thing that's important is that some parents and guardians and caregivers never have these important conversations with their children about what their body is or what, their, what the private parts of their body are. We want children to not be afraid to talk about these things because if something does ever happen, there needs to be an avenue where children can freely come and talk about it and not be afraid mm -hmm. and not be ashamed. That's the other thing. We don't want any child or any adult to ever be ashamed of what's happened. And that's one of the reasons why things don't get reported mm -hmm. because there's the shame and blame that is just automatically attached to any form of sexual violence. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe if I hadn't been drinking, this wouldn't have happened. Well, maybe if I had done what, what Uncle Joe wanted me to do, this wouldn't have happened because Uncle Joe told me to keep a secret and that it's my fault. We need to get rid of all of that. Mm -hmm. That way of thinking and believing is out the door mm -hmm. because it's damaging and it's detrimental to the health of everyone. Thank you so much, Ann, for yes. um, taking the time to do an interview with us and chat with us about this topic and we we know are, how important it is. Lompoc is really lucky to have an advocate like her yeah. um, looking out for our kids yeah. and uh, other victims. Um, and I forgot to mention um, yeah. in my intro leading up to it, but the, the North County Rape Crisis Center, that was started in 1974. It wasn't called that necessarily then, but um, at that time there were no services for um, survivors of domestic violence. So just think about that. That wasn't that long ago. That's yeah. 45 years ago. Yeah. 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 Anyways, math, right? Maybe that's why Common Core I'm is good. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, think about that. that. So these are, these are still important topics. Even if you don't feel like it applies to you, sometimes you never know things happen. So we hope this content is, is helpful and adds some knowledge to our citizens. Um, again, we appreciate you guys uh, listening. Knowledge is power. So yeah. we're just um, hoping to spread good news and um, share great things that our citizens are doing to make our important. town better. Yeah. 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 So All right. back to, let's get back to maybe a little bit more fun stuff. Um, we are doing more our fun. happy hour tonight. Happy. Are you going to join us? I'm going to join, but I might be doing um, some mocktails instead just right. to give my um, stomach and my liver a break. And um, maybe I'll talk about some mocktails um, during that time for those of you who don't want to um, partake in any alcohol. Um, we'll also be doing... And a lot of doing... kids are hanging out at home, so that's, uh, we're going to... Eventually, we're going to start uh, creating a cocktail and yes. then the mocktail to go with it. So kids can join in, have some fun, taste some really great flavors and join the party at the same time. And to time. that point with mocktails and yes. um, happy hour, we, um, we t our initial idea was to do a wine and painting party. But now since I'm probably not going to drink any wine tonight, um, we're going to be painting some rocks. Um, I thought this was kind of a cool idea. Instead of painting eggs, since we're going to look low on eggs, I guess, um, this was just a base coat to get myself ready for tonight. So these are, Jeremy's going to paint an egg, I'm going to paint an egg, we're all going to paint eggs. Um, so show off your egg and then we'll put them around our house on Sunday and I'm going to make Jeremy and our cat find them. So. And for those of you in the know, um, Lompoc Rocks is actually yes. a thing. So yeah. if you go search for that on Facebook... Lompoc rocks you'll find that uh, there's a ton of local citizens that paint rocks and hide them all over town yep. just to make people happy when they find them which is so cool so i'll Small probably do that with my rocks after this so yeah so uh, with this drink yeah. uh, uh our good friend brad, brad brother brad uh was invited back um he there was such a great response to his first uh video that we've uh invited him back to show you guys how to make this cocktail uh, bear with him. He's a little out there, but uh, he's a lot of fun. We love him and hope you guys do too. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Brad here. I am so grateful that you have joined me for another happy hour edition of My Favorite Bartender with Brad and Key. Ah, she's my bar back. I love her. Minimum wage for you, kiddo. Anyway, Let's get started with a fun cocktail. Today we're using vodka, lemon juice, and a delicious simple syrup that we've not made very simple, but we've used honey and chamomile tea. And because it's Easter, we have to use some sort of egg product. So we're gonna show you how to integrate egg white into a cocktail, adjusting the texture into a smooth and silky, wonderful, I get emotional. Let's get started. <laughs> 
today since Michelle is awake. Uh, I'm again, making two cocktails. So just remember, I've doubled the recipe here. So we've got some vodka uh, sponsored by, hmm. And we're gonna go a one. We're gonna go two. So per cocktail, we've got two tablespoons of lemon juice. So I'm gonna make it four tablespoons of lemon juice and a one. As long as you're close, that's just great. Okay, got four of those. This beautiful simple syrup that we've made with honey and chamomile tea that we mentioned earlier. I'm gonna, I've got a half a tablespoon thing here, so I'm gonna use one, two, three for one cocktail, but we're making two, so four, five, six. Because it's Easter, there is egg in here. This is egg white, so this is just, I don't know, maybe a one egg white for two cocktails. You could use one and one or half, it doesn't matter. Uh, the more egg white that you use, the smoother and silkier the cocktail will be. Something very exciting about egg white is that it's odorless and it doesn't have any taste, so it only adjusts the texture. It doesn't add anything funky or eggy in your drink, all right? So I just dumped that right in there, just like that. Egg in my cocktail, are you kidding me? Okay, no, I'm not kidding. So we've got that, we're gonna put our ice in there. Close this up. I'm gonna shake this up and pour it in, you'll see the froth rise to the top. Okay, perfect. All right, now that we've poured this delicious cocktail into our glasses, I'm gonna finish it with just a fun little ingredient here. This is just cardamom. Cardamom that we've just ground in our spice grinder. I'm gonna take a tiny little pinch. A little bit of aromatics. Oh my gosh. All right, so there we have it. I have made two delicious cocktails, one for me and one for my wife. Glad you made it. <laughs> almost lost you there. Yeah. Couch is really comfortable, it's isn't it? So comfortable. Uh huh. Anyway, I've made you a delicious Are cocktail these both here. Mine? Uh, yes, I've put mine somewhere. Where, where's yours? I'll just drink the lemon juice. Okay. Perfect. Yes. Cheers. For me. Happy Easter to you too. Happy Easter. Uh, Thanks for sharing. Just because you don't have a drink. We'll... Cheers, everyone. Cheers. We'll see you tonight at happy hour. Brad's Brad. over the top, man. He is. Super, a little out there. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, thanks, Brad. Yeah. Uh, thanks for bearing with him. He's uh, in, he took care of the yeah. cat okay. Yeah. That was, that was nice. But that so. cocktail is delicious, and yes. I love the silky texture. The egg white froth almost reminds me of, like, fl marshmallow fluff in your mouth. Um, it really is very good. And I think that you could easily make that a mocktail with, like, a little bit of club soda um, instead of the vodka. It would be, obviously, you need to do it. Yeah, but, uh, okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, or do kombucha instead of vodka? That would still that would also be really good. And that is maybe a ginger kombucha with that same cocktail idea. Mm -hmm. So maybe I'll try that. So yeah. Do you know what time it is? It, we're almost done, and I've made it through without having to leave here and um, die. <laughs> this show has just flown by. Yeah, it's been half it really an hour. Does. Ah. You guys are awesome for hanging out with us. Uh, we're going to jump in and uh, comment on lots of your comments yep. and say thanks to all of you. Remember, keep telling your friends, keep sharing. Uh, if this is bringing a little smile to your face, uh, it could probably do that to someone else. So please yep. share um, and, and um, a take home message. Yes. Well, we know it's Easter weekend. We know a lot of people want to go and be with their bigger families and go out and do things. Um, but it's so important that we stay home. Even my mom called me last night. Sorry, putting you on the line. Um, Sorry, Karen. <laughs> but she just thought, like, well, do you think we could still do Easter dinner um, if we just sat six feet apart from the table? And that's not how this works. Um, if they're not already in your household, you we shouldn't be going out and having dinner with them. So um, to all the people who are on the front lines already working this, um, we have an important message from one of our essential healthcare workers um, reinforcing that message. Good morning, Lompoc. My name is Mike, a resident here in Vandenberg Village, uh, emergency room nurse at Goleta Valley Cottage Hospital. I wanna just say thank you 
for everybody that's staying home, staying put, keeping isolated, keeping your distance. Uh, as we're out there working, uh, we really appreciate you guys staying home and staying safe and healthy so we can get through this. Uh, from my family to yours, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mike. Thank you, Michael. If you guys uh, haven't seen uh, episode one, his wife was our first interviewee yes. um, and talked about some of the challenges there. But thank you to the Coombs family and to Michael Coombs for uh, being on the front lines. Yeah. We really appreciate it. Thank you guys again you guys for joining so us. Much. Happy hour is tonight at yes. 530. And if we don't We're going to go there, live. Have a wonderful Easter weekend. Yes, absolutely. And our outro moment of Zen is from the other night when we got some time We went to, to Halama and I have to give a shout out. When you see this episode again and a few before this, when you see the intro and the outro, again, the music that's yep. uh, playing under the scenery is from m my favorite musician in Lompoc, Jacob Cole. Jacob, thank you. We're going to work on getting you here live so we yes. can enjoy more oh, of your music. Awesome. But thanks for providing some tunes uh, to, for our show. We really appreciate that. Have a great day, and we'll talk to you guys all very thank soon. Thank you, guys. Thank Here's you. your moment of zen.